When we look at the popular vote in Tuesday's general election, Senator Raphael Warnock beat Herschel Walker by more than 35,000 votes. But the results could completely change come December 6th. That is the day of the runoff. It all comes down to who gets out to vote. Atlanta News First, Abby Kosouris is here to give us an idea about how turnout could look. Money is already pouring in trying to get you to come out and vote in the upcoming runoff. However, a lot of voters feeling what's called voter fatigue, meaning they're tired after a long, demanding general election. Mark Roundtree with Landmark Communications says it's up to candidates to convince people it's important to come out and vote. Control of the Senate will be at stake, just like it was in 2020. Roundtree brings up two runoffs in history, one where voters went back to the polls, another where they didn't. Take 2008, for example, when Republican Senator Zaxby Chambliss won re-election. In 2008, nearly 4 million people came out in the general election, but slightly over 2 million came out in the runoff. That's a 45% drop-off. In 2020, we saw less of a drop-off. 5 million people voted in the general election, and 4.5 million came out in the runoff. Only a 10% drop. I think we're looking at more like a 10% drop-off this time. The balance of power in Congress is at stake, which, like 2020, should be a major motivating factor. UJ political science professor Charles Bullock has found while incumbents normally have a lead in the general election, they lose power in runoffs. If you lead in the first round, you've got about a 70% chance of winning in the second round. But if you're an incumbent who gets forced into a runoff, but nonetheless you led it, as Raphael Warnock did, then the odds of you winning dropped down to about 55 percent. Roughly 35,000 votes separated Raphael Warnock from Herschel Walker. And historically speaking, the closer the race, the greater the turnout. Here it is very close. You know, we're talking tens of thousands of votes out of, you know, four million that are cast. So when we factor all that in, it's would you rather be first or second at this point? Yeah, I think you'd rather be first. But uh, does the runner up have a pretty good shot at it. Yeah, yeah, there is a good chance. And with every single vote, a potential swing vote, candidates will pull out all the stops over the next four weeks, whether you're ready for it or not. There will be probably a quarter billion dollars spent in the runoff, so there will be an enormous amount of advertising. That's mail, that's texting, that's television ads, that's digital ads. You're not going to be able to escape the advertising. The voter fatigue that's going to come from that is going to be heavy. In a runoff, Roundtree says the candidates are less likely to try to add more voters and more likely to go to the places where they know they have a voter base and try to get those people to head to the polls. In Sandy Springs, I'm Abby Casores.